Welcome to the Power Factor Show. The bandwidth for this episode of the Power Factor Show is brought to you by the Firearms Radio Network. Firearmsradio.tv Sponsored by Taylor Freelance, Rainier Ballistics, Hodgson Powders, and JPL Precision. Hey everybody, welcome to Power Factor. Um, today we're gonna talk about goals and goal setting and what that means and why it's important to you. Um, goals are a personal definition of what success looks, looks like. Uh, goal setting and achievement is the one thing that takes you from one skill level to another. Goals need to be realistic. They can't be too simple uh, and, and that you would immediately accomplish them. And on the other hand, they can't be too difficult that you're bound to fail. Um, so you want your goals to be a challenge um, with respect to your shooting, but you don't want to make it such that, you know, that, that let's say you go out to the range and immediately you achieve your goal um, very quickly. On the other hand, um, if you find that your goal is taking a very long time to accomplish, it, it may be that you set the bar too high and you need to maybe have some smaller stepping stones toward that larger goal. Um, with respect to goals, actually, some people actually keep a diary or a notebook of what their goals are and how they're progressing toward them. I personally don't do that, uh, but a lot of people actually do recommend keeping a shooting diary um, of, of how they're doing, what they went out and practiced on, um, and what their goals are and what their movement toward that goal is. Um, so it might be something that you may want to consider. So goals are kind of broken down into four different categories, which we'll talk about here, but primarily the categories are practice goals, uh, competition goals, short-term goals, and long-term goals. So let's start out with practice goals and discuss what those are, uh, and we'll see how that fits, fits into the larger picture. So practice goals, obviously, as it sounds, are goals that you set for practice session, practice sessions, I should say. Uh, practice goals are all about skill improvement. Um, they, it may take many different practice sessions to achieve that particular goal, um, but that's the idea that these are things that you want to work on in practice. So some examples of, of practice goals may be um, improving your strong hand, weak hand shooting skills, uh, such that, you know, for most people, um, they're a really good freestyle, they shoot fairly well strong hand, but when it comes to weak hand shooting, um, usually their accuracy and or speed is, is a bit slower than their strong hand shooting. So what a really good goal might be is to um, work on your weak hand shooting skills such that it is just as good as um, your strong hand shooting. And then another goal might be that you want to work on your weak hand strong hand shooting skills such that um, you see no degradation in performance relative to uh, your freestyle shooting. So another example might be of a, a shooting goal um, would be to improve your, your say, your long, long distance shooting skills, uh, such as your, you know, 25 yard or 50 yard uh, group shooting. That's for a lot of people, you know, that's, that's kind of a, a downside of shooting. They don't go off and spend a lot of time doing that when they get to a stage that requires a lot of accuracy. They haven't worked on that. So for a lot of people, um, setting a goal to improve uh, that part of your shooting skill uh, might really have uh, high benefit payoff. Another example might be um, build drills, and build drills are a measure of speed. Um, the classic build drill is seven yards uh, from the holster draw, fire six rounds in less than two seconds. Um, that's actually a goal that I worked at uh, for a while when I achieved master level. Um, and it is, you know, a lot of people say, well, it's a kind of a pointless, a pointless exercise, um, but it does work on trigger speed and it also does work on draw speed and all just basically speed all over and, and the, um, the fundamentals, not so much of a, of a accuracy drill, uh, but more of a speed drill. Um, another example of a drill might be working on or setting a, a goal to, uh, work on your target transitions or splits. So uh, you may set a particular uh, par time for your target transitions and your splits on a target. 
again, when you're doing that kind of a, kind of a drill, make sure that you're doing the same uh, target to target separation and the same distance from you to the targets when you do that. So you have a common baseline that you're working on because the problem is, is that if the, if the targets are different or if they're um, say hardcover or at different uh, distances or different transitions between the two, then you have no baseline that you're working on. So you don't really know if you're actually improving or not. Uh, and that's the one common thing here is that when you're doing any of these drills, you want to make or goal setting, you want to make sure that the drills that you are doing are set up with a standard baseline so you're not deviating from that. You can actually quantify, quantifiably measure uh, improvement in your shooting. So another example might be um, classifier drills. You may have uh, particular classifiers that you um, use as a measure of your improvement. And this is not to say that you're going to go out and start grooving classifiers or intentionally trying to shoot particular classifiers to ace them. Uh, to set a artificial high bar for yourself when it comes to classification, a uh, classic example of, of uh, gram bagging. Um, but it is a good measure to go out. Uh, there are some particular classifiers. I like, actually like the El Prez because it, the El Prez really um, you know, has everything. It has a, a, you know, a reload. It has um, fairly fast um, splits between the targets. It's a well-defined classifier. Uh, there's a lot of data on it out there. Um, historically, it's, it's one of the classifiers that's always been used to uh, measure IPSC shooters. And it's kind of funny because way back in the day, they used to say a, a D-class shooter would be able to shoot that, I think, in like 15 seconds or less. Um, and obviously, you know, that, that's not the case anymore these days. It's, it's quite a bit faster than that. Um, another example is, is shooting uh, a particular stand clean. Um, and as an example there from a shotgunning standpoint, um, it's always a goal to go in at any stand that you shoot and, and shoot 10 for 10 or 8 for 8 or whatever it is. In other words, drop no clay targets at all. That's a really nice goal to have. Um, I like trying to do that um, and, and it, it basically is a, a really good um, goal to have. It's interesting that one of the guys that I shoot with, Dave Jeffrey, um, that is his goal to shoot that because he gets a kiss from his wife whenever he shoots this particular stand clean. So that, that's his goal is to get kisses when he's shooting. Um, another example of a, a practice goal would be learning to master a particular target presentation. Um, so for me, one target presentation that I seemingly always have trouble with is a, a following pair where the two targets are, are very close to each other, moving um, or tracking each other. Uh, it's actually really not a following pair, it's a true pair, um, but the targets are following. And for some reason, that particular presentation just frustrates me. Um, I can usually get the lead bird, but I have a problem on the trailing bird. And I particularly don't know what the right process is to go and shoot that right now. Uh, I'm primarily a sustained lead type of a guy or move mountain shoot. Um, some people have recommended using swing through. I find that I don't shoot swing through very well, um, but maybe I shoot it better now. I don't know. But at any rate, it's, it's a goal for me to master that particular target presentation because it eats me up. Every time I, I go shoot sporting clays and I see that, it's like, oh boy, here we go. Um, it's basically watch my score tank right about here. Um, and, and it would be nice not to go into that particular you know, stage with that mindset of, oh, gee, I'm going to fail now of having confidence in shooting that saying, oh yeah, I know how to do this. So that's one of my goals uh, right now is to learn to shoot that target presentation. Um, another goal might be learning to master a new uh, target engagement technique. So examples there are maybe like learning how to shoot collapsing lead or learning how to shoot swing through or learning how to shoot intercept method or, or all these different types of methods because all these have different applications of when you can use them and it's good to know how to go and, and be able to shoot them when they are needed. You don't want to be a one trick pony where you only know how to do one thing and, and one thing very well. You want to be you know, flexible or adaptable um, and it's good to have that goal to go out and then learn how to master those other um, those shooting techniques. Um, another example might be learning to master a particular station in skeet. So a lot of people will have um, particular sometimes stations in skeet that eat them up. Um, sometimes it's, it's um, this is kind of funny, it's for right-handed shooters, it seems like it's always, um, you know, you're doing really well and you get to station six and you're on the doubles on station six and there's that, the low house going away bird and the um, high house coming in. 
and a lot of times people will break away from that low house uh, bird trying to get onto the high house bird faster and not pay enough attention to it and miss it or people may have trouble at station four on the um, on the leads that are involved there or maybe you have problems at station eight station eight is kind of a bit of a trick shot um, and you just have to have fast reaction uh, time uh, to the target so those are types of, of goals that you can go off and, and have uh, for different practice sessions so let's move on now to competition goals and, and obviously for people who don't shoot competition um, this really isn't going to apply um, but for those of you who do uh, competition goals are obviously goals that you set for um, competition matches so one particular example might be um, winning your division or class uh, so if you are shooting production um, and you're at you know the the A master grandmaster level uh, your goal uh, for that particular match is to go and, and win that division. So you're trying to win production division. Uh, if you are a lower class shooter, um, your chances of probably winning the, that particular division are not very good, but there's a very good chance that you can win your class. So that, that would be your particular goal is to win your class in the division that you're shooting. Um, another a goal might be shooting a particular score on, on the classifier. So if you're trying to move up, um, you know, you, you get to all, all the club matches uh, usually will always include a classifier stage and your goal should basically be to shoot the classifier very well. Um, don't go and hot rod it and, and try to, um, you know, grand bag it that you're going at above your skill level, but you don't want to tank it or blow it either. Um, so that should be your goal for uh, shooting the classifiers is to do well and shoot a representative score. Um, push it a little bit, but don't excessively push it. Um, another example might be um, shooting the match clean. That's one goal that I always had when pistol shooting is that I always might, I strived when doing this to always shoot and not have any penalties and not have any misses. I would literally judge my, my particular club match by blown stages and blown stages to me was any stage that had a penalty or any stage that had a miss. So I wanted to have basically zero blown stages and that was my goal uh, a lot of times when, when shooting was to, to just shoot very consistently and, um, and shoot well, but not to have any misses or penalties because those are the things that eat you up. If you shoot really consistently well, you may not you know, burn down every stage and you may not win every stage, but if you shoot every stage well, there's a very good chance that you will win, win the division or win your class in that division because other guys will be out there hot rodding it and they'll blow it. And if they tank a stage, that's just you know, points for you. Um, another example might be finishing within the top, and I'm going to call it X at a major match. So um, a lot of times at, at major matches, and now I'm talking like regional or state um, or area championships, uh, depending on where you are in terms of a class shooter, um, it, you know, when I was shooting, I was master class, um, and at club matches, I sometimes could end up beating grandmasters, but usually you go to a major match and you're, and you're not going to beat the grandmasters because they obviously attract the, the really, really good shooters. Um, but you know, if, if you say, well, okay, I'm probably not going to, you know, win or come in first high overall but I want to get within the top 10 or, or whatever your number is, your baseline number is. So that's another good way to set a goal of, of at major matches just to finish within a, a certain percentage um, or of the, of the winner or within the top, you know, pick your own number um, as an example. So, so another idea that you could work on as a goal is staying focused and staying calm. And that's one thing that's, that can be really difficult for a lot of people when they go to matches is nerves, dealing with nerves, dealing with the pressure, match pressure. Uh, and fortunately, the only way you can really deal with that is to go and shoot matches. There's a lot of stuff that you can do um, in preparation to try to work on stress, try to work on pressure, but there is no uh, you know, substitute for the real thing. And the only way to get through that really is to go and shoot, and shoot, and shoot. Uh, lots of club matches to get, you know, I'm going to say the, the butterflies out there. And then as you move up to the more major matches, again, the butterflies will kind of creep in. But as you start shooting more of those, they, you know, or, or go away. And eventually you'll get to the point that you can go into any match and, and the frust or I should say the, um, the butterflies or, or just the nervousness um, will not affect you at all. Uh, so that's one thing that you, you really want to work toward because when you're nervous or when you're tense, your shooting will definitely degrade. 
Um, another example would be shooting a score that would win the class above you. This is one thing that I like to do um, now in the shotgun sports. Um, I'm right now in E class, but it's my goal to actually shoot and win what would be D class. And and again, this gets back into what I was saying of finishing with the top X. I like to finish if I can within the top um, three of C class at my um, at the club matches that I'm shooting at. Um, so that's one of my goals right now is to to shoot a score that is considerably higher than the class that I'm in, and if not, um, place in the top three if I can of, of a class that's actually two above where I'm at right now. Um, another example would be to uh, here in, in shooting. Um, don't, don't compare yourself to other shooters directly. Um, don't go and say, I want to beat, you know, Ted at this match. That's my goal is to beat Ted because the problem is, is that if Ted has a really bad match, um, then you don't really know where you are. Um, you want all of your goals to really be representative of, of a common baseline, not of a variable and particularly not of somebody else. So it's, it's good to say that, you know, I want to finish it within the top you know, X of, of a given match, but you don't want to say, I'm, I'm aiming for this guy. Um, you know, this is the guy that I want to beat uh, because the, the problem is you're really setting a false goal. Um, basing a goal off somebody else's performance uh, really is not a goal at all that you can quantifiably measure your improvement on. So um, you want to watch out for that. You want to make sure that you're, when you're doing competition goal setting, um, that it's a, a solid baseline that you can measure and see, you know, match over match over match of, of how you're progressing, not relative to somebody else. Now, if that somebody else is progressing really well, okay, well, that might be a good representation, but um, generally speaking, it's not really good to pick, to pick, pick a particular person and use them as your benchmark. So the next thing is short-term goals, and short-term goals are usually goals that, that last or have a duration of, of roughly a, per, a period of a year or less. Um, so examples of a short-term goal might be advancing to the next class level. Uh, so as an example for me, um, right now my, my short-term goal for this year is to get into D class. Um, and right now, the way that NSCA works is that they use it a, what's called a punch-based system and that you earn a, a punch or punches for all of your match wins. And then when you achieve a certain number, you go into um, the next division. Um, so it's my, or I should say the next class. So it's my goal uh, for this year is to achieve enough punches to get into D class. Um, and realistically speaking at the rate that I'm shooting it's not going to be possible for me to get into C class this year even though it's probably really where I truly belong um, so my goal for next year uh, of 2015 um, assuming that I get into D class this year will be to get into C class next year uh, so another example for a short-term goal is learning to be more consistent as a shooter um, that's one thing that I'm always trying to work on is consistency and that's something that you should work on also is, is shooting a very consistent um, score or being very consistent in your shooting, uh, be it you know sporting clays or skeet or IDPA or USPSA. Uh, and again, like I mentioned before, in terms of competition, to me, consistency was not blowing sages. So that's one thing that you want to work on of, of shooting lots of A's. Um, set that as your goal um, of, of being very consistent and not having uh, blown stages and, and being more consistent, I should say, in your shooting. Um, another example might be refining a particular shooting skill. So you may have, um, may have a shooting skill that you're working on uh, and you may want to work on that um, refinement over a year. So maybe, um, you know, for me, my shooting skills are, are probably different than a lot of yours coming from a shotgun background. Um, but what I'm typically looking at is, is working on um, target presentations, uh, pre-shot routines, um, stuff like this, a visualization, um, getting the gun in front of the bird, stabilizing the pitcher, stuff like that. For you, um, it could be working on, let's say, prone shooting um, or long distance shooting or speed or um, working on shooting where there's hard cover or lots of no shoots or, or accuracy or things of that nature. Or kneeling, that's another good one of, of being able to shoot from a, a squatted or kneeling position. So that, examples there are basically 
uh, just shooting skill related uh, goals for short term. And again, you want to work on this stuff. It's not, you know, it's not something that you go out and just immediately accomplish. This stuff takes time uh, to accomplish it. Um, another example for a short term goal might be preparing um, for and shooting a particular match. So you may say, hey, I want to shoot the Area 1 Championship this year. But to shoot the Area 1 Championship and get to the point um, for that particular match where I want to win my class or whatever, I need to shoot X, Y, and Z club matches because I know this particular club has, um, you know, known for, let's say, a lot of speed shooting. And this other club is known for a lot of accuracy shooting and so on and so forth. So you want to kind of set a, a map or a road plan, if you will, um, of progression toward this major match that you're trying to shoot. So pick these other smaller venues out that you can shoot, work on your shooting skills, uh, get your level up, um, preparing for a um, major match, and then you should be ready for it. And the last example is long-term goals. Um, and long-term goals are goals that take uh, more than a year. Um, and these are usually very high kind of lofty goals. I don't want to say that they're, you know, the unobtainium type goals, but uh, if you're really pushing yourself hard, you want to have, have long-term goals of what you're trying to strive for. So uh, an example of a long-term goal would be an accomplishment of a specific high class that you would like to become. So maybe for some of you, you might be saying, hey, I want to become a master class shooter, or I want to be a grandmaster shooter, uh, or something like that. Um, so that would be an example of a, of a long-term goal. Um, another example of a long-term goal would be shooting the Nationals. Um, that's one thing that when I was shooting pistol shooting, I always said, hey, you know, I just want to shoot the Nationals just once to at least say that I did it. Um, and did it quite a few years ago back in Las Vegas when they first moved it there. So that, for me, was one of my long-term goals as a pistol shooter is I wanted to actually go and experience the Nationals and see what it was all about. Um, another example might be shooting internationally. So. For those of you who are shooting USPSA, maybe you want to go shoot IPSC. Maybe you want to go shoot the World uh, World Shoot or something like that, um, which means for doing that, you're going to have to go off and shoot the different um, IPSC uh, qualifier uh, matches that they have to be able to go off and, and shoot that. So um, that might be an example of a, of a long-term goal uh, of, of shooting internationally or going to a different country or something like that, or even just shooting IPSC in different countries. That, that's another idea of of something and you say, hey, I want to go and learn how to shoot or go shoot Ip Ipsic in Ecuador or something like that. Uh, so that would be an example of a long-term goal. Um, another goal might be for shotgunners is, is progressing and being able to shoot in the Olympics. Um, that's, you know, the highest level, I think, for shotgunners is, is probably shooting in the Olympics, be it in skeet or trap or um, doubles trap or, or whatnot. Um, so that would be an example of a long-term goal for a shotgun shooter. And lastly, another example of a long-term goal might be becoming a sponsor to professional shooter. So a lot of people say, hey, you know, I really am enjoying this. I really think it would be great to become sponsored, to be a professional, and make this my day job. Um, and for some people, boy, that's a really high goal to accomplish. But there are people that have gone off and done it, and it takes a lot of hard work to do that um, in terms of marketing yourself, but also shooting skills and being able to go out there and, um, and, and hit that kind of a goal. So... So those are, are just some of the, some of the ideas or, or points there in terms of, of goals. But the idea here is that individual goals represent stepping stones to other goals. So practice goals are effectively a, a stepping where you improve your skills are a stepping stone towards, say, competition goals if you're shooting competition. And then competition goals could then be a, a stepping stone toward short-term goals. And then short-term goals are then a stepping stone toward long-term goals. And you can kind of see how they all kind of add up. They're all in line. It's a progression, so to speak. Um, the goals are effectively building blocks. You know, you, you achieve one and you build on that and you move on to the next level. And you achieve that and you move on to the next level and so on and so forth. Um, the downside of not having shooting goals is you become stagnant. Um, you effectively kind of shoot with no purpose you effectively kind of lose the joy of shooting because you're not really accomplishing anything. Um, goals drive you towards self-improvement and, and honestly make shooting fun. And I've talked before, well, actually, I haven't really talked in detail about um, the burnout that I went through in terms of pistol shooting um, years ago, but I think a lot of you know about that, and we've kind of mentioned it here and there. Um, and I, at, when I was doing that, um, I had... I was a couple percentage points away from Grandmaster, but I really had no desire to get to the Grandmaster level. Um, I 
was and still am a, a um, chief range officer. I had a lot of people suggest that I should go and become a range master, but to be honest, I had no, no real burning desire to go off and do that. So I was kind of just, I would say, going through the motions. I was going out and shooting, but I wasn't really shooting with a purpose or shooting with a goal. Um, and to me, it just kind of felt like, you know, like you're a boat in the middle of the ocean with no rudder and you don't know where you're going and you're kind of just going in circles. Um, and I don't really think that was the primary cause of burnout, but I'm fairly confident that it may have, have definitely led toward it because in the case of burnout is you kind of feel like you're going and doing all this and it's beginning to feel like a job and there's no joy in, in it anymore. Um, and at least with uh, having goals is that you have enjoyment. I mean, it's kind of personal satisfaction of saying, hey, I, you know, I set this particular goal out and I accomplished it. And now I'm going to set another goal and move on to the next one. And, that, and that's one thing in that when you achieve your goal, immediately set another goal um, or, or have another goal basically in mind or in plan uh, that when you accomplish the first one. And you also may have multiple goals in play at the same time. Um, but I would really caution against go or shooting with no goal whatsoever. And it can be simple stuff. I mean, like I was saying, working on skill building is a goal. Um, and, you know, pick some particular skill that you want to work on and, and make that, you know, the, the thing that you're trying to, to accomplish and, and that at least that is a goal. But you're doing something, you're seeing some progression and some enjoyment as opposed to just, you know, kind of like going through the motions and spinning around in circles, so to speak. So. Anyway, um, so that does it uh, for goal setting. I hope you got something out of that. You can contact us at powerfactorshow at gmail.com and or Facebook. Um, and between now and then, until you see you next time, uh, break them all.